Let's talk about how to use cold and how to leverage shiver as a particularly strong stimulus to increase fat loss through mobilization and oxidation of these fatty acids. Shivering is one of the strongest stimulus, stimuli that one can incorporate to stimulate fat loss. Now, shivering is almost always associated with cold. We think shivering, we think cold because when we get cold, we shiver. And there are two ways that shivering can increase fat loss. And there are several ways that you can use shivering, you can leverage shivering, and you can leverage cold to accelerate fat loss. But you have to do it correctly. And most of the people that are using cold and frankly suggesting cold as a means to increase metabolism fat loss are suggesting the exact wrong protocol. In fact, the one I'm going to recommend is 180 degrees in the opposite direction to the typical protocol that you'd hear about. So we have several kinds of fat, three kinds in fact. We have white fat, white adipose tissue, and we have brown fat or brown adipose tissue. And there's a third kind, which is beige adipose tissue. White fat is the type that we traditionally think of as fat, subcutaneous fat. And it is not particularly rich in mitochondria. It is there as an energy storage site. Brown fat largely exists between our shoulder blades and on the back of our neck. And it's rich with mitochondria, which is why it's called brown fat. And brown fat has a particular biochemical cascade whereby it can take food energy and can, it can take food basically, break it down and convert it into energy within those cells. It can actually use energy directly. It skips a step. Beige fat is sort of in between. It's white fat that could be brown fat because it has some mitochondria in it, but not as many as brown fat. Now, cold exposure does several things. Making ourselves cold can allow us to build up mental resilience because getting into cold of any kind, doesn't matter if it's a cryo chamber, doesn't matter if it's a cold day and you forgot your sweater or your parka, it doesn't matter if it's an ice bath or you, you're lying down in the snow. Cold causes the release of adrenaline from your adrenals and it causes the release of epinephrine from these neurons that connect to fat. Now, the big effects of cold on metabolism and fat burning are going to be through two routes. One is that if you expose yourself to cold, you have the opportunity to trigger activation of brown fat as well as to convert more beige fat into true brown fat. So you essentially create a stronger or a hotter furnace. That's the way to think about brown fat. It's like a furnace. And so with this principle that we started with of calories in versus calories burned, what you're doing is you're increasing the amount of burning, you're increasing the burn of energy by increasing the intensity of the heat inside you, so to speak. Now, how can you do that? Well, if you get into cold water or an ice bath or a cold day and you try and remain calm and resist shivering, you actually short circuit this mechanism for increasing brown fat thermogenesis. The paper published in Nature shows that it is shivering itself that causes the brown fat to increase your burning, your burn rate and your metabolism. And it works like this. When you get into cold and you shiver, the shivering, those that low level movement of the muscle, those small movements, triggers the release of a molecule called succinate. S-U-C-C-I-N-A-T-E, succinate. And succinate acts on the brown fat to increase brown fat thermogenesis and fat burning overall. It actually increases body heat through this brown fat thermogenesis pathway. Now, how much cold exposure and how often, that's the key. But before I give that detail or set of details, remember, if you resist the shiver, you are not going to get the increased metabolic effect because you are not going to get the succinate release. So if you want to get your body heat, your thermogenic level to go up, you need to shiver. So how many times a week do you need to expose yourself to cold will depend on how much fat you're trying to lose and how much you're trying to increase your metabolism. There 
are studies that describe positive effects on fat loss of exposing yourself to cold either through cold shower or through ice bath or other cold water. It doesn't have to actually have ice in it provided it's cold enough for any time, anywhere, excuse me, between one and five times per week. But it turns out that just one exposure per week can be valuable. The question then is how long to get into that cold environment and how cold should that environment be? So first, let's talk about how long to get into that cold environment. The answer here might be a little bit different than you might imagine. It turns out that if you want to trigger the shiver, what you want to do is to get into the cold and then get out of the cold and typically not dry off and then get back into the cold and out of the cold. That will definitely stimulate more shivering than just getting into the cold itself. So what I'm not referring to is getting into the cold environment like an ice bath and waiting until you shiver and staying there shivering, okay? When you get into cold water, there are two factors that will dictate whether or not you shiver. Probably three, but let's just talk about the main two. One is how cold it is. So how cold should it be? And look, if you get into water that's very, very cold, it can actually shock your heart. It can actually give you a heart attack if it's truly, truly ice cold and you're not adapted to that. Just cold enough to be uncomfortable is a good place to start. So for some of you, that's going to be 60 degrees. For some of you, that's going to be 55 degrees. For some of you, it's going to be high 30s, right? Depends on how cold adapted you are and people vary in terms of how well they tolerate the cold. So here's a potential kind of sets reps protocol that you can play with. Find a temperature that induces shiver for you. That's going to vary depending on your cold tolerance and how cold adapted you are. One to three, maybe five times a week. Get in until you, or get under the shower or whatever it is, until you start to shiver, genuinely shiver. Then after about a minute or so, get out. Spend one to three minutes out, but don't dry off. Get back in for anywhere from one to three minutes, but try and access the shiver point again. And you might do three repetitions of that. So it's three times in and three times out total, okay? That's a great starting place. And what you don't want to do is build up your tolerance to cold so fast that pretty soon you're able to resist the shiver because remember, the shiver is the source of the succinate release that will trigger brown fat thermogenesis. But just remember, if you become cold adapted, you're not going to get the fat burning effects to the same degree. So cold is a powerful tool for fat loss, but you don't want to adapt. This is reminiscent of a rule that you hear about in endurance exercise and in strength exercise as well, which is that you want to use the minimal effective stimulus to promote growth or progress, okay? And this also speaks to the rationale for using cold exposure to accelerate fat loss for certain periods, but then maybe not doing it year round if fat loss is your goal. Maybe use it for two, three months at a time and then stop for two, three months at a time because it is such a potent stimulus provided you engage in the the shiver.